Hello everyone. So I'm just sitting here and I had a bunch of different thoughts come to me and I realized that there's some information inside here that I want to share with you on how to make your hair grow. So I walk around, most of the time my hair is on the top of my head up in a bun, but sometimes it's like this, like I have it now. And almost everywhere I go I get comments on my hair. So I want to let you guys know something very simple that can allow your hair to grow. Our body responds to need. So if we want our hair to grow, our body needs more hair. All right? So I'm going to go way back, way back in our evolutionary process as a human and go all the way back to when we were just a clump of cells in our mama's womb and talk to you about what hair is and how to make it grow. So there's a time where we were, half of us was a sperm and the other half was an egg and we joined forces and we created one cell. And then that cell turned to two cells, then four cells, then eight cells, and then we're the flower life. And then all of a sudden we are a bunch of different cells and those cells separated in, into two different types of cells and then to three different types of cells. And those three different types of cells are, they call them the germ layers. Those are the three different types of cells that make up the basis of who we are. And out of those three different types of cells, we have the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm, okay? So the endoderm makes up our digestive system and our organs and our skin is an organ, so the endoderm cells eventually end up making like the very inner layers of our skin. So every cell that was an endoderm at this stage, so the stage I'm talking about is about two weeks after conception. You are three different types of cells and these cells end up becoming you. So in the endoderm layer of these cells, it's all of your digestive system and your organs. Your mesoderm makes up your bones and muscles. So everything that will become a bone and muscle is at one point, two weeks in, just a bunch of different cells. So all of your bones and muscles are connected because of this, right? So if you go into physiology, everything's connected. There is no such thing as a, like a bicep muscle that is separated from everything else. It's all connected because at this stage, all the cells were all connected in the fibers and the energy meridians and everything, the, the little strings back then that go through all this end up being our bones later on. Now, the last one, ectoderm, ecto, outside, right? That ends up being our outside layer of skin and our hair and our brain and our nervous system. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So our outside skin layer is actually made of the same cells that our brain and our nervous system is. Interesting, but not really talked about in the biology and science classes I went to in school. So I'm gonna be making some far-reaching claims that I didn't learn anywhere. This is just stuff that I'm making up as I go based on my knowledge of studying the human being for my entire life. All right, <clears throat> what's in our hair and our skin and even our eyeballs and all throughout our nervous system, in our brain and all throughout our nervous system? Melanin, okay? Melanin is what gives our hair color, our eyes color and our skin color. And melanin, as I was taught, was that it is there to protect us from the sun. But I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's actually quite the opposite. Melanin is stimulated by sunlight. It actually captures sunlight and it's holding sunlight for us and transmitting it through our entire body. So remember, at one point, all the cells that make up our outer skin, our hair, our nerves, our brain, were all one, okay? So now, when sunlight hits our skin, it's really hitting our brain, right? And that melanin is holding the sunlight. Our hair, so our hair is more like an electric transmitter. It's grabbing 
the energy from the sun, right? The sun isn't just releasing visual light. It's releasing a lot of energy that we can't even perceive. We don't even know what it is. I would go ahead and say that it's actually facilitating the organization of the human being or, or the being because there's not just melanin in humans, there's melanin in animals, and even plants have their own version of this, right? Plants are all green because that's what's holding the sunlight. It's stimulating, and plants are using the sunlight for its growth, as are we. Now, all right, I got four minutes left. <clears throat> I'm trying to make this a 10 minute video. Now, interesting fact about these guys is that in the winter time, we actually lose hair, all right? Now our body is very smart. Almost, it's, it's smarter than we can even comprehend. If in the winter time we lose hair, that means that the argument that hair is here to keep us warm, that, that doesn't make any sense because in the winter time we would actually gain hair if it was there to keep us warm. Now hair does keep us warm, it is one of its properties. I'm gonna say that it's not its main property. I believe, or I'm gonna say, which means that I know, I know that we lose hair in the wintertime because there's less sun in the wintertime. And when we're, there is less sun, we are going to need, hmm, yeah, we are going, I'm gonna say that right, we are going to need less melanin. The body is going to produce less solar cells if there is less solar power right? Our body's smart. It's not going to waste energy. So that's why we also get paler in the winter time. So the key to this video and why you're all watching why, how to grow more hair, it's simple. It's one sentence, get out in the sun. So it's the middle of winter, right? It's February 20 something fourth or something like that. Uh, it's the middle of winter and you can see how tanned I am. Okay, I have a lot of melanin going on in my skin right now. My solar cells are fully activated and full, which then means that my internal nervous system is also filled with light. Okay, I get it in my eyes, I get it in my hair, and I get it on my skin, naked by the way, so that all of my solar cells are optimized. And my body has no need no reason to get rid of this in the winter time, right? It's still growing. I feel like my hair grew an inch in the last couple weeks because I've been in the sun so much. And this is a thought that just came to me. I was like, mm, 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 mm. yes, sunlight equals more hair because the hair has a need to capture sun. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. So the hair, sun comes into our eyes and light comes into our eyes rather and goes into our pineal gland through the pituitary so there's two cords that come off our eyes it, one goes to our visual cortex and one goes to our pituitary and then down to our pineal gland all right and our pineal gland then produces melatonin so melatonin is related to melanin right and the pineal gland is all about the spiritual awakening stuff Pineal gland is about dreams. Pineal gland, the melatonin is what's active in our dream state. It's also replenishing and, and making our body better when we sleep. So melanin is highly associated to the melatonin cycle of our body with norepinephrine. So sunlight is directly influencing that through our eyes. Now that the sun that comes in through our hair, through our solar center, so our solar centers are up in our head. This is our moon center. The solar centers are up in our head. The hair grabs the sunlight and transmits it down through the same process. It comes down through the pituitary, then the pineal gland, then our mouth, our tongue and our teeth is orchestrating the transmission of the light through our energy meridians, through our entire body, through our entire system. And actually even the tongue brings the light down to our heart which one then we can transmit and radiate out into our reality. That's for another video. But this video, how to grow the hair, let's call this part one, get out in the sun. And then your body will need more solar cells. Sayonara.